Now, today in Coach's Corner, we're going to be taking a look at some of the work Jim Hardy, the US instructor, has been doing in understanding the swing plane in his book, The Plane Truth for Golfers. Today, we're going to take a look at the one plane action. Now, Hardy calls the one plane swing that because, as he defines it, at the top of your backswing, your left arm for a right hander is very close to the plane that your shoulders are turning on. Okay? Um, on a two plane swing, the left arm swings up above the plane that your shoulders are turning on. Now this may seem like a very small difference between two actions, but as Hardy states, what you're trying to achieve with one swing is actually completely opposite of what you're trying to achieve with the other, and the fundamentals that go with each are very opposite as well. Um, famous uh, one plane swingers, which is what we're going to concentrate on today, are people like uh, Ben Hogan, probably the most famous golfer of all time, and of course Chad Campbell, that played so well in the recent Masters. Um, the one plane swing, it really suits people that have a fair degree of uh, ab and upper body, back and chest strength um, and flexibility because where you get your power from in a one plane swing is the turn of your shoulders and upper body against the resistance of your hips. That's really the engine room of the one plane swing. Now, let's have a look at some of those fundamentals. So, first of all, with the grip, in a one plane action, we're looking for a neutral to slightly stronger grip. Now the reason for this, and that both of those beads will be going around my right shoulder, is that in a one plane action, it's a slightly flatter action and the squaring of the club face happens a lot just through the club moving around on that flatter arc. There's not a lot of hand action involved in the one plane swing, so we don't, and the type of grip a little bit strong to neutral helps to encourage that not a lot of hand action. In the setup, if we look from in front, the stance is fairly wide. The ball position for an iron is just forward to centre. For a driver, it might be up on your left heel. It looks like that. From down the line, and this is probably one of the most important things about the one plane action, is that you want to have your spine tilted at least 35 to 45 degrees towards the ground. It's a lot more tilt than you may have been used to feeling if you want to give this method a go. The reason for that, of course, is that we're going to be turning our shoulders 90 degrees around our spine angle and swinging our left arm on that pl same plane. If we get too upright and our shoulders turn too level, our whole swing plane is going to get too flat to hit that ball down there on the ground. So the setup's going to have that amount of tilt as you turn, and you can check this by putting a club across your shoulders and getting a friend to help, when you turn up to the top, you want to have a look and see that where that club points is no more than about three or four feet outside of the ball. On the way through, the way the body works is that it turns through, trying to keep it as much as possible on that same 90 degree turn around your shoulders right through to the end. At the end of your swing, you can come up out of that posture a little bit to save your back and your shoulders can finish fairly level. The other thing about, just to backtrack to the setup, is from in front, you want to feel like you're very much straight up and down and centred over the ball. You don't want to have a lot of tilt to the right. That just builds width into your swing. And because the one plane is already an inherently wide and shallow swing, you don't want to build that ex extra width in there. Okay? So that's the way the setup and the body work during the swing. Now, the way the arms work is, a ca is, a, is of course, very different from a two-plane action as well. In a one-plane action, the arms work around the body. So, on the way back, as you take the club away, the right elbow is actually working up and behind the body, the left arm is working across the chest. So the club's coming around on an arc, a little bit of rotation at the top of your backswing with your left arm will help to place the club on plane, about the same plane as your shoulders. Okay? On the way down, the movement is the opposite of that. Your left arm swung across your chest and rotated, your right elbow behind you on the way back. On the way down, the arm movement is actually quite passive at the start of your downswing. You just start turning your whole torso, your left shoulder, your torso and your left hip back down to the ball. That will actually carry your arms and the club down the plane line into the ball. On the way through, your left arm worked, uh, on the way back, your left arm worked across your right elbow behind. Now your right arm works across your body and your left elbow folds up and behind. A great way to think about the action of the arms in a one plane swing is that they are always rotating and working around your body like that. When you put those two moves together, 
it should look something like this. Now, important things to watch out for when learning the one plane swing are this. When making your back swing, one thing you can't do is lift up out of your spine angle and turn your shoulders on a flatter plane because that is going to make your whole swing too flat. The other big thing you can't do in a one plane swing is on the downswing, you don't want to feel like you drop your right shoulder down and swing in from this angle because that's going to put the club too far in behind you, the face too open coming too much from the inside and you're going to hit pushes and you're going to hit hooks. So that's a couple of things to watch out for. If you would like more information about Jim Hardy's work, the one and the two plane swing, check out his book, The Plane Truth for Golfers. For more information on my teaching, go to our Golf Zone website and I hope you have...